Okay. That questions regarding that at this stage, and then I will talk a bit about research. What questions do you have? No questions. Okay. Briefly research. No, but what we what we can do, yeah. I think, because you because you're looking at a as an institution, you're moving into that, from our conversations, I'm sorry, yeah. moving into that blended learning space. Yeah. And I think some of the, from the conversations that we could have today, or yeah. what we could share, I think we, we can certainly be assistants in, in that space, mm -hmm. and perhaps giving further perspective as to what blended learning yeah. is, and show you some of the platforms and some of the environments that we've been using for the moment for that, that experience. So I'm also e-learning coordinator for our university. <laughs> that's, that's a job that's kind of doomed to fail. <laughs> Because uh, colleagues do not like it when you tell them anything and you do not have any power, so you can just try to convince and outline the benefits and advantages. And if they say not interested, and then you can't do anything. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We can certainly have that conversation. Uh, so, are the ideas research uh, going on on like current technology like IoT, Internet of Things, cyber physical systems? In research, you mean, or in lectures? So yeah, any project. Uh, like yeah, I mean that's a big thing in Germany at the moment. Yeah, so huge amounts of money, research grants flowing in. Yeah, I can talk about research a bit. Um, so where is it? Here we are. So we structure our research around so-called research centers of excellence, and that's a full overview of what they offer. So we have nano analytics, thermal semiconductor sensor technologies sensoric applications, biometrics, mechatronics, <laughs> software engineering, sustainable building, because we also have the civil engineers, architects, IT security, so security is a big issue in the context of Internet of Things, um, biomechanics, um, yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot going on, and since, I mean, we have, we have 230 professors, so to be honest, I do not know what everybody is doing in each faculty. And it's very much professor driven, although we have those centers, it's really driven by individuals and the amount of money they, they bring in and what they drive. Um, yeah, so it's better to talk about what colleagues in computer science are doing. So I ask every colleague to create one slide to give a brief overview of what he or she is doing. So um, we have two, or those four kind of. Re Centers of excellence or clusters are more pertinent to our faculty. That's robotics and smart grids, so optimization of complex production process, remote production, architecture of medium voltage networks or smart networks, because we have a very high share of renewable energy in the electricity networks, creating a lot of peaks, you know, in the in the system and that needs to be balanced. We and that's also being taken on by the Energy and Resources Center of Excellence. So they all do all those smart grid in combination with IT security. Biomedical engineering is big, so medical image processing, it's a colleague of mine, biosignal processing, biomechanics, sense, and cluster IKT around IT security sensor networks, uh, very much related to cars, communication in the car, and interconnection of production facilities. Okay, so um, we have this so called Indigo network, they talk, we call it digitalization, we call it Internet of Things, we call it also Industry 4.0. Um, yeah. So let's look what our colleagues are doing. There's Stephanie, Steffi Schatzinger, she was the one working for Google as an R&D engineer. She's in those SQL schema, evolution research. So you, you move from relational databases to no SQL databases and you have problems. Um, as far as I understand, when you, when you develop something and your schema changes that you experience conflicts and the question is how can you update your schema as far as I know. That's what this picture is supposed to, to show. Main publication, core publications down here. So, shows, so she's very much in the database, big data. That's me, so I'm doing near offshore e management of IT organizations and shadow IT with my three PhD students. So near offshoring is yeah, that you do your application development in India, what are critical success factors for this? Lean management is that you try to apply management methods from production management to service organization, like the IT organization, and what makes this successful. And Shadow IT's approaches to prevent and cope with IT that is developed in the business departments without the knowledge of the IT departments. And that's at first sight a problem, but it can also be positive in terms of um, 
production gains are being more innovative. Yeah. Medical image processing, that's my colleague Christoph Palm. So um, they do brain imaging, the most stuff of machine learning, you know, to analyze the images. He also has a 3D lab where you try to simulate hand surgery. Hand surgery is very hard to practice. And so um, you can develop software, you know, using um, glasses to train uh, future surgeons how to, how to perform surgery. He also used to be at RWTH uh, Aachen and has some um, top-notch publications from there. Um, the digitalization lab, so that's Internet of Things. Here, digital industry on the right-hand side. Um, it's one aspect, and it's my colleague Wolfgang, he's also doing software engineering from a quantitative perspective um, with regard to global collaboration. Ethernet in, in cars, so by now when, when you produce cars, you have proprietary communication networks in the car, the so-called CAN bus, which is very outdated and which is very bad when it comes to deal with the amount of information that is now supposed to travel through a car. So there are attempts to bring Ethernet to the car because yeah, it offers more bandwidth, maybe more reliable, and that's what they are uh, researching on. And <laughs> I haven't understood this one, but it's my, my colleague um, Frank, and it's basically operations research and optimization. So he's very much into modeling, modeling of production flows, modeling of inventory flows, and optimizing those inventory production flows. And yeah, he's also um, organizing a very famous European conference on modeling, and that's what he's up to. That's very mathematical, very operations research related. Um, that's a security project. My colleague Christoph Scornia is currently um, pursuing several millions of funding in this case um, over several years. And they want to develop a so-called profile-based anomaly detection so that you monitor your network and that you detect when something is not going the way it's supposed to be kind of automatically. So that you don't, um, yeah. And so you, you have a fast and reliable detection of attackers and you can block or isolate them so that they do not cause any harm. And they want to do this with, in, in real time speed, you know, that in the moment the attack occurs, you're automatically detected and can prevent it or can act against it. Yeah, so that's it. So this is primary research from, from computer science related. I mean, we have, when it comes to research, in addition to lecture exchange or student exchange, what from my perspective works well is that you, for example, try to, to co-supervise master theses. That you have a student, either a New Zealand student or a German student, and you send him back and forth for maybe four weeks, eight weeks or so, and you co-supervise the topic he or she is working upon, and that brings you closer together as colleagues, as researchers, because if you immediately want to start with a research project, that's, uh, at least in my experience, very hard. You do not know each other. Uh, yeah. And so using students as kind of facilitators or vehicles to bring researchers together on low barrier, low risk, um, not much investment needed level, that's, that's usually a good idea. And if they are in Germany, they could also enroll for papers in addition to doing this uh, thesis work, so maybe enroll in one or two papers, since it doesn't cost any money, it's not a problem. So that's an idea, and also those projects are an idea. So we run these projects every semester, and we sometimes do joint projects with partners from Ireland or France, where we form mixed groups, so let's say two German students, two French students, and they do the project together and develop something. And it's either a project being offered by the French um, partner or um, through one of our German professors. But then um, both professors from France and Germany co-supervise the project. And that's also kind of nice. From your institutional perspective, and Greg probably knows better, better than I, but we, we often have a, a more overarching kind of institutional research strategy mm -hmm. that may be related to either uh, to, to, to a, a governmental and uh, national kind of imperatives or even perhaps to, 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 to regional imperatives. Mm -hmm. Is there no alignment of, 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 around that? You're you, you not engaged? I'm not so much engaged in this. In theory, there is a strategy. <laughs> but <there's, laughs> they create so many centers and clusters and so I, I honestly I do not understand, so I can be pulled out of that. I take my PhD student and do my own stuff because that's too complicated for me. And since uh, I'm lucky for IS, I don't need laboratories or equipment, I just need smart brains and PowerPoint and Word. 
and access to some libraries and maybe a statistical analysis software and find that, yeah, we, we have a research strategy, to be honest, I will need to find it out. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's primarily about Internet of Things, it's production, because production is a strong footprint, and with production comes the whole aspect of safety and security. So that's one major thing. Um, and the other major thing is energy, because we have machine fabric and housing this producing this equipment for high to medium voltage networks, so all the smart grid, renewable energy um, stuff, that's the second main main focus. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to boil it down, it would be those two. Yeah. Just two things I want to ask. You know, at the end of it all, these people who are involved in this will need to find an employment somewhere. So how is it is to get employment? And the other thing is, how much involvement is there in the industry, involvement in the programs, courses you offer? Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, so is there a collaboration in yeah. that respect? So, employment, you mean our graduates? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, we have full employment in Regensburg, all of our graduates do get jobs. So we have 2% unemployment rate or so. Okay. And we have very close links to the industry. So almost so the internship, they only they don't do it at OTH, they do it at industry partners. Most of our students work while they're studying and they do not work in restaurants and cafes, but they work it's in our case in the IT sector or for um, one of those companies doing IT stuff. Almost all bachelor theses and master theses are being done in the industry. So I, I've not supervised one master thesis that has not been done with a, with a company. And what I usually do is that if I supervise them, I meet with them at their employer's um, location two or three times to get in touch with the company. Do they pay them as well? Yeah, usually they do pay. Also for, for the internship, for sure, and most, uh, yeah, most often also for the master thesis. It leads to the effect that our students are spoiled, so if they want, let's say, do an internship in New Zealand, I have many contacts in New Zealand, I can provide them with an internship, and I say, you know, mm, no pay involved, and then they pull back, because they're not willing to work for free anymore, it's not. Even for projects, when they do those capstone projects, these mini projects, and they do it um, for a company or with a company, they expect some money. And yeah, industry is willing to pay. There's an absolute shortage of skills and staffs with regard to, to IT. So yes, I mean, we have very close tie links to the industry. We also have kind of a supervisory board for our management. And this is 50% um, the university senate. I'm a member of the university senate, so of the kind of leadership team, if you want. Um, and the other 50% are industry representatives. And those are all from the executive boards of the companies in and around Regensburg. So yeah, and that's very much different to what the university sector does in Germany. That's very much more fundamental research. I mean, they also work with industry, but it's more, it's less applied. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, a very interesting selection of uh, research areas. The um, maybe a conversation later as well, but. Um, when you sit into is there, is there much um, development in the area of critical information system and IS? Um, what about in, in the health environment? Is there broad health informatics and, and that space? Is there any research or in health informatics or yeah. the software layer of health? Well, it, it, it's numerous levels. So yes, I mean to be honest, um, we have three professors in the area of medical IT, medical health informatics stuff like this, mm -hmm. and two of them are very hardware. <coughs> production or you know equipment focus they both uh, so um, one came from Carl Zeiss uh, which are in Jena which produced this um, you know the, the, me the equipment medical equipment medical products mm -hmm. and he was uh, head of an R&D unit and the other one Christoph the medical image processing guy from RWTH Aachen and um, yeah that's the medical perspective this machine learning perspective and we just recently hired a third colleague for all the, for the software layer, you know, as you said, hospital information management and stuff like this. And I mean, since he is so new, there's not much research going on regarding that. We do our medical IT bachelor and uh, master in conjunction with the university hospital in Regensburg. So they get a lot of practice out of that and we get a lot of lectures from the university hospital. But research-wise, there's, aside from medical imaging, there's not much going on. Yeah. But this will grow probably in the near future. I mean, that was our youngest degree course we introduced a few years ago. I think it's a smart move, I think we're in the right space. 
and it's only from a personal interest perspective, but mm -hmm. within Auckland we've got Orion Health, and uh, mm -hmm. certainly the, the health big data is, is, is certainly mm -hmm. evolving very, very quickly what we, what we do. I mean, I'm more than happy to bring you in touch with those colleagues, and that you can uh, talk more, more content than you can with me. <laughs> in fact, I think the big uh, health big data on, on a smart health system, uh, IoT is one of the things that's working on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Well, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I wish we could have provided you actually with a warmer room. I'm sorry about the uh, temperature. <laughs> I was getting progressively colder. <laughs> but no, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for coming. Uh, can we have uh, tea and coffee?